Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 397. Pheromones make the world go round. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So, pheromones technically are secreted or excreted chemical smells, trace smells that, mm-hmm. that we broadcast out into the atmosphere. And they communicate information about us that Mm -hmm. make us uh, desirable or not desirable to those who smell them. And and there's a lot of uh, sociology and anthropology that's caught up in this Mm -hmm. conversation. But other animals do the same thing. And and pheromones, like uh, animals can smell fear. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's one of the things that they tell you, Mm -hmm. you know, if, if there's a dog growling at you, be still and try to be calm because he can smell your fear and that will excite him. And make that him means it more crosses aggressive. species. Well, for that, for that piece of the communication, okay. not for sexual attraction, but for other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, animals use pheromones to uh, trail food, they, mm-hmm. they, uh, like bees, mm-hmm. uh, or to alarm, which is where the mm-hmm. whole fear thing comes in. Mm-hmm. That's why they tell you if there are uh, like hornets around, mm-hmm. try to not get... Uh, that whole uh, get them aroused because they'll spray you and then other horns will come and sting you and they'll mm-hmm. kill you. I mean, you, you get swarmed. So, so we're talking about not sexual stuff. Uh, but we are today but with talking human beings, about we want to talk stuff. about the sexual part of pheromones, which are, are subtle, nuanced readings of more gross smells. You know, like a teenage boy sweating. Uh, and his feet smell bad, his armpits smell bad, and you have to teach him to, to shower mm-hmm. and use deodorant because <laughs> it becomes offensive to others. But in a, in a more primitive environment, there are nuanced smells, that pheromones, that, that a female will pick up that say he is of breedable age right. and potential mate material, or it will say... He's not available to me for that because he's part of my family. Right. And so it tells you whether... The incest taboo. Well, I want to go over the teenage boy thing. Yeah. Teenage okay. boys go, you know, they, they're going uh, through puberty. And when they go through puberty, they're making a lot of testosterone. Yeah. You, little babies don't sweat the same way. No, and they don't smell. And their sweat doesn't smell bad. No. But and they don't... teenage and, boy does. And they don't because the teenage boy has multiple uh, amounts of testosterone a ton of testosterone babies are making have a little testosterone but nothing like this it's just a trace so this is something that the testosterone stimulates the pheromones Mm -hmm. okay so when you have testosterone you're stimulating all of your sweat glands apocrine and and oil glands to make a some odors but also to make pheromones which you really can't smell they are actually perceived by your brain through a different different gland, not your olfactory gland, which is in your brain behind, uh, near your pituitary, but actually by the VMO gland, which is located high in your nasal passages. But you don't perceive it as a smell. Right. It goes along with that smell of sweat and puberty. And, and, and the reason we notice it so much in teenage boys is because it's never been there before, and then surges, and then they overreact. They get acne, lots of oil on their face. They, but all of that contains pheromones, which explains why everybody's going so crazy in high school when they have both sexes in the same high school. Pheromones are just surging everywhere. So, so this is something that, yes, we smell the smell, but that's not exactly the pheromone. The pheromone is something we don't really, there's no odor. But but the very interesting thing about pheromones that I, I like is that it's one of the ways we, when we meet a potential mate, or we, I mean, I guess we could say the bar scene or whatever, but when you in person meet a potential mate, you can tell by your attraction level whether A, they have pheromones, 
or B, their pheromones are so much like yours that they're not attractive to you. In other words, if my if I had a brother and he's making tons of pheromones, it is not attractive attractive right. to me. Right. Because he has the same genes as I do. Therefore, I am not going to be attracted to that. But I will be attracted to a very different pheromone, which is quite different than I am. Opposites attract. Because it's a different genetic, a, a genetic uh, background. And we were made to mix genetics and not, and not uh, inbreed. So when they used to say love is about chemistry. It is. And they meant some magical, mystical quality. What science has learned <laughs> is that it's about pheromones. Mm -hmm. And the attractive piece of that, uh, it, it, it is subtle and nuanced and very discreet. And you can't just smell that uh, when, when somebody walks by, except that you can. I mean, your brain is processing. Mm -hmm. I was chatting with a guy the other day about he specializes in uh, scotch, and he was talking about these, these tasters mm -hmm. at the different breweries in Scotland have finally developed noses and part of figuring out about scotch is what he calls the nosal, N-O-S-A-L, quality. Mm -hmm. And you can smell distinctions between, uh, he was telling me, how much peat is in it, what kind of water is mm -hmm. in it, uh, what other ingredients are, are in it mm -hmm. from the flavoring of the, the oak barrel mm -hmm. or the sherry barrel or whatever. And he could tell the difference. And he said the human nose, you, you can distinguish among like 40,000 different mm -hmm. smells that are very subtle. And you can train that. But for those of us who are not trained, just walking by when our head turns, in part it's because we're picking up pheromones mm -hmm. that say, I am mature, male or female. Mm -hmm. I am breedable. Mm -hmm. uh, are you interested in me? Mm -hmm. And then there are other, other things that, that factor in like beauty our society's definition of beauty and so mm -hmm. on. But that chemistry happens spontaneously and instantly mm -hmm. and subtly. It does. And, and that's why it's hard to date online because you can't get the pheromones <laughs> over, over the computer. Yeah, you look like the picture, but you're not, yeah. Yeah, but you're not, you're not really taking in the pheromones. That's why that, the, um, what is it, the time dating? I don't know. I've been married for so long. I don't know. That time dating where you just sit down with somebody and you've got like three minutes. Yeah. So, the, so that, that's a matter of, oh, I'm picking up your pheromones or I'm not, you right. know. Um, I think they call it speed dating. Speed dating. So you, you, you go, as a bunch of singles meet together, a lot of times at a mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. and they will interview one another in three-minute segments. And then mm -hmm. they even ring a bell and say, move mm -hmm. to the next person. And you try to see, is there any attraction here? Is mm -hmm. there anything worth building a conversation? Mm -hmm. Would I be interested in taking you to dinner or, or having a, a, a drink in the afternoon or something mm -hmm. to see if there's more? Mm -hmm. But what they don't tell you, and maybe they don't know, is that all of your antenna are searching. Mm -hmm. And for some people, you will get a, an arousal response mm -hmm. or a cued response that comes to you through the pheromones. So I had a patient who had... who lived in the same house for 20 years, and her neighbor lived in the same house for 20 years. And she had um, either been on the pill, birth control pill, mm -hmm. or she had been um, menopausal. She went from the birth control pill to menopause. And she had never really spoken more than a few words to this guy next door. So I put her on, she came to me for hormonal uh, replacement, so I put her on testosterone, I put her on estradiol, and all of a sudden, her pheromones were going. And I said, you're going to, you'll, you'll find, she was worried about not finding a mate. And I said, it, it's much more likely now than it was before because you'll be making pheromones. Okay. So she comes back. I was four months later. And she said, I'm engaged. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, in what? And I, uh, no, I just, <laughs> I was, I was taken aback. I couldn't believe it was that fast. She said, you know, this guy I've lived next to, door to. All these years, I never paid any attention to him, and he never paid any attention to me. Right. But we're getting married, and he's moving into my house, and we're selling his. And, I mean, yeah. that has to be something that has to be pheromones, or it has to be hormones. It has to be – but the hormones are what stimulate the pheromones. So here's the bad news for women. When we go through menopause, or even before that – we don't have testosterone. I mean, our testosterone goes down to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And so our pheromones drop like a rock and we're not, people aren't attracted or may, or, or not the, just the opposite sex. If we're, if we're lesbian, then other women aren't attracted to us. But I mean, we just don't have that pheromone attraction. So 
we lose that part, and then we also lose interest in sex and and bonding in that way. So, getting their tes- getting testosterone back for women is pivotal in feeling sexy and sending out the message without words that you're available. Yes. Um, so to that end, we we're talking about teenage boys and mm-hmm. uh, underarm hair mm-hmm. and underarm smell. The pheromones are released both from the underarms mm-hmm. and from the scrotum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, the, and the pubic hair of women and the pubic area of women. The pubic area of, of males mm-hmm. and females. And, and again, there's a subtle nuance there mm-hmm. that says I'm sexually available or interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it requires testosterone. It requires testosterone. There was there was another thing that I was going to ask you about. And for instance, they've done studies on babies being able to recognize their mothers by smell right. like three four weeks out. Yeah. Uh, and also their face and their voice. Mm-hmm. They've done all these things. That's a that, different pheromone. It, it's, it's a not different a pheromone. pheromone. So they're not all sex. They're not pheromones. all sex oriented. So mm-hmm. so it just the smells that allow you to recognize somebody, somebody close mm-hmm. to you, somebody are not inherently arousing. And breastfed babies can smell the milk. It's yes. like I, I've they when can, you, when other people who aren't breastfeeding hold a baby, they start crying, and then the mother has the milk smells. They stop crying. It's, yes. It's really. An interesting thing. It's not necessarily the mother, but it's the milk. Uh-huh. <laughs> it may be the mother. Well, but too. it's hers it, because yeah. of the pheromones from mm-hmm. her that come to that. Yeah, it's very. It's really interesting. All the things that we don't we don't perceive, mm-hmm. we don't perceive in a conscious way, are happening all the time. So, so I have a question. I know, remember now the question I wanted mm-hmm. to ask was, what about birth control pills? If if you mm-hmm. get a, an eighteen year old daughter who's mm-hmm sending out all these pheromones to the high school boys. Uh, and you think, well, maybe I need to have a conversation with her about birth control. Well, you do, but <laughs> you do. You always do. It should have been earlier than uh, that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Just, I'm trying but, to be discreet or delicate as, as we talk about but, this. But basically, her her testosterone from her ovaries is making her make a lot of pheromones, and the, that's attracting boys as it should. But in our society, we don't mate and get married till later. Hopefully. So we're trying to, and we're trying to preserve our daughter's virginity, or we're trying to preserve them, or keep them from being used, or having ha- getting sexually transmitted diseases, or pregnant. So one of the ways to shut pheromones down is to shut testosterone down, and we do it with birth control pills, because birth control pills will take an ovary that's making lots of testosterone and and makes it really quiet doesn't ovulate, and it doesn't make testosterone, so the pheromones drop. Now, that's a good thing. So you protect them from pregnancy at the same time you protect them from being sexually available. Yeah. Not everybody does, you know, some people are still sexually available, whether they've got testosterone. (laughs) You can override it. You can override it, but in general, that's how it works. Yeah. So flip the switch to then we have a young married couple. They... They're on the pill because now they're married and they want to plan their family and nobody wants to have sex. Yeah. Because the husband's not attracted to her because she's on the pill and she's not making pheromones. So and that's in, really hard to explain to a young couple. Huge. I mean, I, I've had several yeah. in my office to say, why are we not so attracted to each other anymore? Before we got married, this we were desperate mm-hmm. to be together. And now it's like, eh, I want to watch a ball game or I'm going to go play golf mm-hmm. or, you know, how, how come the dishes or dirty, you know. There's lots of things, but there's not. But this one is is about. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. But there can this be one, but one can is be. one that we can fix, right? And that is that we put our patients on um, marine IUD or an IUD or some other form of non hormonal birth control, and that allows them their ovaries to reawaken and make pheromones. Mm-hmm. So, or or make testosterone, which then turns into pheromones. So, that's one way to. Flip the switch, and and it should be flipped when you're married. I mean, if that if that part of your to, life to is the gone positive, to the good side, yeah, flip to, so that you don't that you do have pheromones that you right. do attract your spouse. That's very important, and we've kind of um, sabotaged that by using birth control pills from from menarche when you're first starting having periods till you go through menopause. That seems a little. Uh, that's really dampening sex drives, and it's really dampening pheromones, but. We do other things. We we wear lots of perfume, and I mean, 
soaps, We've perfumes. sabotaged our sex life by wearing perfume all the time and soaps and deodorants. And I hate to even admit it, but, you know, I, I haven't worn deodorant for lots of reasons. But, but, but why should you hate to admit it? It's I, because the point you're making is... I don't is smell bad. <laughs> we, we have been marketed by a manufacturing culture... Mm -hmm to believe that we're more attractive if we smell artificial and not human. Right. And if you have friends from around the world, they will tell you that Americans are identifiable because they they smell artificial. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with... That does not mean you don't bathe. No, no, it doesn't mean you're not you clean. It means you do bathe. But you have natural you bathe, smells. You bathe frequently, probably more frequently than people who just spray themselves with things. But natural human smells are not as repugnant as the marketers would suggest right. to us. And they've conditioned us. And, and To think that that's normal, to smell flowery or smell... And that's whatever. an issue with a lot of elderly people. Because uh, they can't smell. Not, not to be sexually attractive, but they, they don't smell... They, they cannot do the process of smelling, so they make themselves smell more aggressively mm -hmm. by putting on tons of sweet sugary smells uh -huh. and you walk through a room you can follow some of these people where they've been yeah. in, a, in a building by smelling the trail that they've left behind them of yeah, really obnoxious take pretty oh much my away god from all people who can't yeah, smell anymore <laughs> it's really horrific yeah it's it to the rest of us it's it's offensive mm -hmm. to them many of them uh, to their to their reasoning, many of them are incontinent. They don't want you to smell urine. It depends. You, don't, right. you know, there are many other reasons. There are other people reasons use for that. it. And and we and I get that. I'm not criticizing that. It's just that we've lost the ability. Let's just say, young people, we don't need all that stuff. <laughs> right. And we're trying to be, you know, You'd be clean, people but who are don't be artificial. To, right. Yeah. Trying trying to teach our kids to be clean, but not to be, spray themselves with that stuff called Axe or whatever that you know all the perfumes that we right. we have people convinced they need. Well, but they sell sex on TV with that stuff. You know, it's like you sell high karate, and all these girls come and lay on the hood of your car. It's my theory yeah. that they're selling sex on television because we don't have enough pheromones at home. Well, that's an interesting theory. Because then we're watching for anything that gives us that selling sex thing. So the, the pheromone thing is important. I used to talk to my, my uh, young women who were unmarried over the age of like 23 or 24 right. and their clocks were ticking and they're like, I just don't know. I don't know. I want to get married, but you know, nobody seems really interested. And, I'm, and so they've been on the pill since they were 15 or 16, right. which was great then, but now they need some pheromones. So I, I would just say, you know, I think it would be best for you to, I'd use the word pheromone, but sometimes I wouldn't. I'd just say, right. I think it'd be best for you to go on the Moraine IUD or an IUD that doesn't cause you to stop having ovarian function because you need to have you that like to woman, attract people. An attractive woman. An attractive woman. And you need to stop using woman. smelly deodorants right. and smelly perfumes. Right. And stop all that because, honestly, <clears throat> that's preventing you from meeting the right guy because that attraction can't be emphasized enough. That right. attraction that we can't really perceive is that je ne sais quoi. We don't know what it is, but it is something that we just can't see yeah. and we can't smell. So it is something that you need to make the most of and not shut it down. Uh, obviously, you don't want to have too much of that or you're going to be attracting the wrong everything. But but. We we should use this as something that's actually there and allow nature to take its course. I'll, I'll tell a tragic story. One of my clients years ago, a young woman, 28 years old, her husband dropped dead unexpectedly. And for the next several months, she slept in the shirt that he had on when he died without laundering it because she could still smell him. When Rachel went to college, I slept with her T-shirt. So... It's not. That, I mean, it's it's, it's not, not that, that unusual. Extreme I mean, or unusual. When you miss somebody, exactly. it does They don't have to be dead. When you miss somebody, right. They still have that odor in their clothes as as long as they haven't, you know, like yeah. washed it out or prevented it. And and you can still. I mean, the smell is is one of the greatest triggers for our memory. Yeah. And and pheromones actually, sexual pheromones actually make us feel calmer, happier. You know, and cuddlier. More secure. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if your husband or wife's out of town, 
you can sleep with their pillow and smell them mm -hmm. and it makes you be able be to fall some, asleep somewhat more still more quiet mm -hmm. because they're there so in many ways it's not just sex it's no. it's just more comfort and bonding right so right. we just thought you'd like to know about this even though you've wondered why does why am i attracted to that guy maybe it's how he smells yeah, he'll turn your head <laughs> thank you for listening Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.